Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Brief of Korea. Today's weekly video is on light penetration and the effects of it in your reef aquaria. So I'm going to talk about different topics, basic stuff that you should know when it comes to the photosynthesis and all that of corals and uh, other values and things that you should be aware of when it comes to lighting and how it affects the behavior of the animals. I'm not going to talk about light schedules and so on and all that, but just a basic uh, understanding when it comes to light penetrating when it comes to the clarity of, of your water in your reef aquaria. So hold on and let's take a deep dive. Okay, so here we are focused at the tank at a certain angle. Now before we start, I thought I mentioned, uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and that little bell. So starting about when it comes to light penetration in your reef aquaria, I'm gonna go through basic uh, concepts and basic things that I've been researching and that all of you should actually know. Okay, most corals we keep in our reefs are photosynthetic. Now, zooxanthellae is a part of dinoflagellates in which plays a symbi uh, symbiotic relationship between photosynthesis and zooxanthellae, which lives in the coral tissues. Now, the color of the light is important for the photosynthesis process to occur in which corals benefit more from the blue light spectrum versus the white or cool white spectrum. Both are actually good because photo, uh, photosynthesis, of course, meaning that uh, most of these corals and most of the ones that we keep, of course, are photosynthetic. But more and more, uh, I would say the blue light spectrum. Matter of fact, if you were to look at uh, YouTube or other media sources and you look at uh, underwater videos and photography, you will see that not unless if you're very high up, um, let's say on the reef, you always have that blue tint. Uh, it's not like bright, bright white. Now, when it comes to light penetration, light penetration can vary due to water clarity in your reef. So as to say, for instance, a better water clar uh, clarity, light penetration is going to be more effective through each quadrant of your reef, like you know the lower, middle, or your upper quadrant versus, of course, less water uh, clarity. Now, knowing and taking into consideration the water clarity and the light par values, when you hear or read in reference to coral placement, it should be placed at a lower level or mid-level or upper levels. This that I'm talking about is, you know, like when you go to an LFS or you're uh, going to look uh, in reference to the specs of a specific coral and it says, no, it should be placed on the middle level or on the lower level or on the higher level. Okay, this can actually be true, but yet at the same time false at the same time. Now, why? Because in reference to water uh, clarity and, and the par values that you have when it comes uh, to the light source, the different lights that you're using. Now, something very important, uh, you should know, uh, know your light penetration either by eye observation or checking your par values at different areas or levels of your reef. So as to say, a coral considered for placement uh, recommendations, either low, middle, or upper levels. You should always check and see how the coral behaves and make the decision if you need to move the coral to a different level in your reef. Uh, what I'm saying here to be more elaborate is you go ahead and you buy a coral and you ask uh, the LFS, well, where, should, where do you think that I should place it? No, place it on... Uh, on the middle, or place it way up there, uh, or place it on the lower. Um, since water clarity and par values differ from tank to tank and light uh, sources to another, you should actually use it as a baseline. What you read here on Google or on YouTube or what I say or other 
um, creators say, but also use that as a baseline. But at the same time, observe the call because I have had issues, trust me, I've been there, done that. I have had issues that uh, SPS is supposed to be way up there and yet I've burned it. And my lights aren't that, that high. I have the total brightness on the XR15 Pro. I have it at 45. And then, you know, I have the AB+. Plus. But yet at the same token, uh, that same coral um, SPS or something, you might place it on the lower quadrant of your tank and it'll do phenomenal. And that's because also considering the water clarity. Now, uh, one final note is that when it comes to using uh, other reef lighting templates, most likely you're not uh, going to get the same results to, to your water clarity and par values. So when you go and you copy, let's say uh, you go ahead and you, you copy a template uh, from uh, Ecotech Marine or from another LFS, and you go ahead and you apply it to your uh, um, template to your lights, not necessarily is it actually going to behave exactly uh, like what you're looking at at the LFS or on YouTube. It might actually vary, it might actually change. Why? Well, because number one, your uh, tank val uh, volume is probably not the same water volume and that, trust me, will uh, affect the template that you're looking at at a tank that might be like 1,200 gallons, uh, 70, 80, or 100, and the specific water density that they actually have. But not necessarily when you go ahead and copy that template and you put it in your uh, reef tank will actually behave when it comes to the animals exactly the same way because you have less water volume or you might have more water volume and also considering the clarity of, of your uh, water, the light penetration going through it. So that's something else that you should consider when it comes to this topic. And also the placement of your actual corals. enjoyed the video found it informative educational and fun if you did like I said before at the beginning of the video subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and that little bell and like I say at the end of all of my videos happy reefing thanks for watching and until next time bye bye